Hey, OpenSUSConf 2023. Thank you for joining me today. Let me introduce myself. My name is Derek Anderson, and I'm here to talk a little bit about distributed compute at the edge. All right, so my talk is titled WASM, CAR, and Peer-to-Peer -peer Distribution. And I want to give you, you know, a little introduction about myself and my team. So I'm the CTO. We've been working on this project uh, for over a year and a half. I've got some good friends along the ride with me uh, founding this company, Boudian, Liam, Michael, uh, and myself as Derek. And we have been working on decentralized distributed compute. Uh, we're all Web3 aficionados. Um, I've worked at some companies that you may have heard of, such as eBay, PayPal, and Walmart Labs. And I've also been in a previous Web3 startup, Akash Network. So now here I am working on Blockless, and I've got a little tale uh, to tell, and I thought it'd be great to bring it to this conference. So let me tell you a little bit about what Blockless Network is and what we're building. So Blockless itself is a distributed peer-to-peer -peer computation network that's community-driven. And we expect to have online nodes that are scattered across the globe of varying and different degrees. We are using an underlying technology platform based on WASM, and we'll get a bit into a bit about that here in this talk. And the reason that we're using that is because it's portable, it's purposeful, its foundation is intent-based. We can really move this machine around and share a lot of the intricacies uh, of the compute on a lot of different platforms without really needing to ever target the compile or running a virtual machine in case we need to. General purpose, so you can run really any software on it. Uh, there obviously is a, a little bit of gap in the development environment in the community because WASM is so new, uh, but uh, it's catching wildfire and we're seeing it pick up a lot of target compilation for different languages. Uh, the reason that we're working on Blockless, and this isn't really kind of towards OpenSUSE itself or containerization, but we're working on a consensus-based distributed compute network that works much like a blockchain without the state sync. And we really find that WASM and edge-based computing and distributed computing in general is going to really benefit from what we're building. Um, and not that this is really important again for this conversation, but we're building a network of networks and we really just want to be a, a developer experience platform uh, as well as a platform as a service and bring compute loads to us. We're using an intelligent dynamic distribution protocol um, to kind of move these workloads around. So we've had a lot of experience in what we're building and that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to bring this talk, uh, you know, to OpenSUSConf is really to kind of share the story of where we are and what we're building. So let's get started and you know, discuss. I'm going to disappear here now uh, as I just switch to the straight slides. Let's discuss what IPFS is or you know, the interplanetary file system. It's a protocol designed really to create a permanent and decentralized method of storing and sharing data. So you can put data anywhere on the chain. And if you don't recall that data, it may get buried. But that's kind of OK, because maybe you didn't need it and it's there for storage. A replicated IPFS node would still have access to that or replication to that data. It just may take time to reconstruct and retrieve. But because the system is actually also designed for sharing that data, there are mechanisms built in that make it really advantageous for using in kind of a, a manner that we are using, say, a Docker replacement or a repository management system. Web2 does rely on centralized servers to kind of store and provide the data. And really, when you push things to a hub, you're really relying on the underlying hub mechanism to control that data. There are now some uh, programs out there to actually move towards a decentralized version of a hub. And that's great. Um, I, think, I think that really kind of aligns with this. But uh, kind of the way that we're going is in a different direction. And we'll get there. Uh, IPFS does address these issues by creating a distributed network where each node really stores a whole copy of the data, but really doesn't. There's different node varieties uh, based on what a provider wants to do, and some of those are just the most replicated or used data uh, will be attached to that node. And then there's archival nodes. But really, kind of the end-to-end -end is that community-driven participation allows for censorship and data localization 
really the data localization here is what we're talking about when we talk about file hoarders is that the data that is used in the most congruent ways uh, will actually be the ones that are still available for retrieval immediately uh, and not just stored in a blockchain. So um, to continue then, uh, IPFS uses content addressing, and this is where we're gonna go and talk in about car files. And the content addressing is used to locate and deliver the data. Instead of asking for where the data is by where it's stored or an IP address, IPFS asks for the data by what it is, a cryptographic hash of the content. So if the file never changes, the cryptographic hash never changes. And this really starts to lean in towards why we get velocity on the leanness of what we're building when we talk about using IPFS as a content addressable Docker alternative or an image repository that's going to control what we're, you know, pushing data and how it flows. Uh, the IPFS system then provides a really robust and distributed and secure mechanism for pushing that data around the web. And it doesn't just necessarily mean Web3. This is all web, all web inclusive. Uh, this system works really well. There are gateways uh, in place that allow traditional Web2 to access the content on here. And it works very smoothly. Uh, the, so, so now the question probably comes up in your mind, what is a car file? Well, a car file or a content archive is a file format for storing IPFS blocks. It allows for efficient and verifiable packaging of the data. So again, it uses hashes and it puts it into a tar file and then the tar file has hashes. So there's hashes at every layer to know that the data hasn't been manipulated or changed. It's not just a simple byte count or a simple file name. Um, the hash is content uh, ready all the way through uh, subdirectories and down. Uh, IPFS uses the car format, so it makes it a lot more efficient. You can upload an entire car to a node and storage node will then process that car, identify you know the complementary hashes, the ones that haven't been put into the tree, and then upload that data that may be missing, but also uh, work on the congruency between the data as well. So if that data isn't available on a specific node, it'll be cached then for retrieval uh, on that node, especially as it's being used. So this really makes a lot of sense when we start talking about how Docker containers and Docker image formats use the data that's actually supporting the content container underneath will then be lifted higher in, in priority over other formats. This is excellent. Uh, car files then make it easy to transfer data between IPFS and, and traditional infrastructures because it's just a binary container format, much like a tar file. You can use a car uh, decryption tool and, and extract out of that. We have one uh, for Blockless uh, as well as CLI tool. And you can pack and then unpack just much like a zip file. But the benefit you're getting is that everything inside has been enumerated in a way that once you hand it to a storage archive, it can continue to be enumerated and transported and sliced and diced. And cars that have corresponding hashes then are obviously made up of tree roots that correspond out somewhere else. Car files then are infinitely reusable because you can put data in there, you can put ASCII text, you can put already built binaries. So we're really finding that you can put a lot of things in this traditional container. Again, it's just a tar container, tar format with a specific content addressing table uh, that's put inside. And then the storage uh, mechanisms are aware of how to process this format. So what does a car file really mean for containers? Well, Car files uh, are used in IPFS to transport data. So while Docker images are lightweight and standalone, they're really big and they have everything that you need included to run that layer of software. Well, car files are designed for, as I mentioned, a different bit of lightweight versatility in that you can bundle almost anything into a car and then that is spread across the IPFS network and the layers or the hashes that are used most frequently end up being distributed in a different tolerant way. Instead of caching an entire image and all the relevant layers at the same level, as an image progresses and becomes newer, fresher, but maybe relying on older bases that exist, those levels start to discern themselves through the distribution of the network 
and really start to even increase uh, the efficiency of what you're trying to download because you don't need a lot of legacy software coming with it. Car files use data blocks, right? And the data blocks, again, allow this incongruent uh, trans transportation of the data itself, where Docker images are bundled with the software and the dependency of those. Um, car files are completely uh, inert and really don't uh, concern themselves with the running of software. Docker images do. So again, there's a, a generality of what you can put into a car file. You can store images and text alongside your binaries or your virtual machines. You may think that, you know, this is maybe like storing a, a VHD uh, along with it rather than just describing uh, how it'll be set up or trying to grab that layer and packaging it in the emulator itself. So what does P2P really kind of mean? So we've kind of gone over WASM and we've gone over uh, car files and well, I guess we haven't gotten to WASM yet. I'm sorry. Uh, we've gotten over car files. We've gone over IPFS. Uh, so what does P2P really mean kind of in this entire network? Well, in a peer-to-peer -peer distributed edge network, data really is distributed across the whole network. So it's an entire global series of data available nodes, or you can think of an edge CDN. The CDN has been pushed to the edge. So the car files increase the data availability. The IPFS nodes then do the replication across the system and bring the data to the edge. But then by adding compute and putting in an emulator into the car file, such as an x86 emulator, which Blockless has done, or just executing using a WASM executor, then now we can bring the actual execution, the computation, of the payload closer to the edge and directly to the user and thus really giving the user a big boost in being able to get not only uh, locality of say response time, but as we've seen with data availability and being pumped out of certain regions and the laws that they need to abide by, it starts to become easier to actually manage those things that you need to do by being closer to the user. Now we're going to get into what is WASM. I totally thought we had gotten this, but here we go. So WASM is uh, WebAssembly, and it's often abbreviated just as WASM. Uh, it's a binary instruction format for a stack-based virtual machine, meaning that it's close to native. It's kind of like the JVM, but it's not translated. So a lot of it runs at maybe a 95% cost uh, because it is super efficient, but it also runs very well in IoT regions, um, and it's picking up a lot of steam in targeted C compilation languages like Rust. It's fast, it's efficient, and it's built to be safe. It's built to be single-threaded, it's supposed to be contained, it's built to be sandboxed. It provides near-native performance while not allowing a lot to leak. You have to do a lot to actually give WASM access to certain portions of memory and application, and it just makes it a little bit more difficult to make you know, issues arise when you're talking about security, especially over VMs, especially over containers. Sometimes we see VMs using to wrap containers because of the security concern. And WASM really allows complex applications to be built from the ground up. There's a lot that you can do in WASM. It is not, uh, you know, a, a, a limited platform to build by. Um, it is a very robust and uh, very awesome system, actually. Um, you can use it in non-deterministic applications. Um, it is picking up steam in, in deterministic uh, regions as well, but it allows for a nearly unlimited sense of use. So, so what can we do with all of this uh, put together? And, and you know, we've gone again, WASM, the car, the IPFS, uh, all the way through an entire gamut uh, of a system. Well, yeah, we can do a Docker container with applications and run layers on top of a minimal, minimal, look, minimal Linux distribution. Um, this model, excuse me, let's try this again. So what can we do with all of this now that we've talked about IPFS, we've talked about the car files, we've talked about WASM, we've talked about a bunch of things. Um, really, we can fold this into an entire system that really mirrors or mimics something like Docker. It's a WebAssembly based execution platform where the executor lives close to the user or at the edge. 
and we're using content addressable archives so that we can put more than just binary data in there. We can actually cross-reference layers from other containers that are being built and we can make a more holistic version of what would be a repository of containers and layers in an application system to be archived and presented either at a later date or concurrently uh, as we talk. Um, we can use WASM to load an x86 emulator into that space, and then now we've unlocked a, a potential of also moving uh, architecture-based uh, design around uh, that doesn't really you know, work well in a lot of paradigms. Obviously, writing your software for the targeted system that you're trying to use and kind of employ makes more sense, but being able to actually bring software you've already written and get immediate value and impact out of that is also super important. Filecoin's network data of hoarders, as we mentioned, also works really well for a seamless replication experience. Being able to use hoarders, you can run your own hoarder, that's just an IPFS hoarder, and it will go ahead and cache the application layers that mean the most to you uh, today. So what do I want you to remember out of everything that we kind of talked about today? And really it's that IPFS and CAR are brand new community-driven file storage mechanisms that allow for you to put files out on a long-lived internet that's run by the community. Docker versus car, we have a legacy of Docker uh, where the content information is not as easily identifiable as is in a car. Using a car allows us to really have kind of the edge on being able to do a lot of things over time, maintenance. Um, I'm sure we'll see Docker kind of start to adopt a lot of these kind of same uh, mechanisms as well. The P2P distributed edge network allows us really to move what we're going to do, the data, the compute, the application, all to the edge, closer to the user, closer to where it needs to happen. Introduction of WebAssembly means that we're performant and we're building more powerful applications that aren't just based in browsers and decentralized application uh, layers uh, using, again, all of this together uh, to bring a really kind of rapid approach to being able to uh, build uh, this entire system. So how can you get involved now that we've been talking for the last 15 minutes? You can help by start building on Blockless. Uh, we're testing and we're in general availability. I will mention that we are a Web3 crypto native kind of viewpoint right now, but we're obviously trying to tread towards greater adoption. So please keep following us if, you know, if there isn't something there that, that you like. Um, but you can launch Function as a Service today and you can experiment and test uh, WASM-based builds on our node network. Uh, you can launch local nodes. We have an extension mechanism uh, as well. So if there's software you'd like to port, uh, and you can also help extend uh, the overall protocol and how we do uh, the selection uh, across the network itself. So where do you learn more? Uh, you can scan the QR code here to get to our link tree. Uh, you can check us out at blockless.network. You can also check us out at the docs at blockless.network slash docs. And you can check us out on Twitter as well. So we're there, you know, full time. We have a Discord. Check the link tree. Uh, it's got all the links for all of this and more. So just scan that code right now. And I hope to see you online pretty soon. Once again, thank you so much for giving me a moment to talk and address the OpenSUSE community. Uh, we really feel that distributed network, WASM-based containers are only going to keep, you know, extending and becoming more powerful. And we hope that OpenSUSE is also part of that conversation and the story with us. So once again, Derek Anderson from Blockless signing out. Thank you so much for your time today. Looking forward to chatting.